What is up guys? Welcome back to yet another brand new Major Ben gaming video. Uh, just got back from, you know, the, the hairdressers to get the old fresh trim done. So looking a little bit different than yesterday's video for sure. But anyway, in today's news, we're going to be talking a bit about Starfield. I know this game for a lot of people has died, but I do think there is a chance for it to pick up and actually become a better game. And that's not just talking about modding. That's talking about actually Bethesda themselves doing things to actually proactively fix the game. So let's have a look into to this news article here today and talk about what is being said. Right, okay, so Starfield has been played by 13 million players now, which is actually insane. And the numbers, even, even if we look at um, Starfield uh, player count, if we go on the actual player count now on the Steam, this is just Steam, so bear in mind, this is probably a lower part because there's obviously a lot of people playing on Game Pass on Xbox and various stuff like that. So in the last 48 hours, right now, we're still at like nearly 10,000 players, 13,000. Like there's, there's a good amount of people playing it compared to something like uh, Redfall, which has completely died, like that game is just gone. If we look at the Redfall numbers, as you can see, the player count right now is 35 or 41 and 61 and around that. So very, very low. But they've obviously reached 13 million players and updates will be released every six weeks starting in February. So while Starview was heavily criticized by many, the game managed to become quite popular in the months following its release. According to a new infographic shared by Bethesda as part of the studio, end of year update, the game has been played by 13 million players. Back in the day, this would have been a smashing success, but as this number obviously includes those who play via the Xbox Game Pass, it doesn't translate into 13 million copies sold. We all know this. This is not new information. The average time or the average playtime per player is around 40 hours, which isn't too surprising considering the length of the main campaign. So we have this little infographic, so 13 million players, infinite universes, uh, they've got how, how many hours played by everybody combined, 40-hour uh, average playtime, as they said, hours building ships, uh, planets visited, outpost settlers, uh, all this stuff, all inter interesting information on this graphic. But the part we want to focus on is this bit in the next part. So in the end of the year update, Bethesda also confirmed what is in store for Starfield in the future. Updates should be released every six weeks starting in February, including everything from quality of life improvements to new content and feature updates. Every update will be available for testing in the beta uh, branch before launching. Among the new features hitting the game first will be new ways to travel. That's a big one because we talked about that in past videos city maps expanded ship customizations and new gameplay options such as the ability to customize different elements such as ship damage carry capacity and new survival mechanics as previously announced the game will also get uh, amd fsr uh, super resolution 3 and intel xess support early next year while bethesda is also working on launching creations for starfield early next year the studio is hard at work on the shattered space expansion which will include new story content new locations new gear and more the expansion will launch sometime in 2024 so i'm actually excited for this expansion because i actually enjoyed the base game all in all the story was relatively okay i enjoyed doing the factions miss, uh, missions especially the crimson fleet stuff i found that personally really really fun but uh the story was just okay and hopefully we get some decent expansions to this in this shattered space expansion but i must admit the new ways to travel will be interesting i've never been that bothered by like people who always complain about why can't i fly from this planet to this planet you know like I can in No Man's Sky or, or whatever, but like if they were to do this, first of all, it's not a space simulator. This is a single player RPG. And if you were to fly between those planets, it would take you hundreds and hundreds of hours in real life just to do those things. So that's just silly. And also the point of like, if even if you were to fly to a planet, like there's that streamer who did it, it took seven hours for her to spawn in near Pluto and fly to Pluto, to the actual border of Pluto. And obviously she clipped through it because you're not meant to do that. It took seven hours in real time to do that. So is that really what you want to be doing? I get maybe wanting to fly up close, but the point is, it's although it's not meant to be a realistic simulator, it would be so far from realism to start flying into planets like they do in No Man's Sky. If you actually fly and land on a planet in No Man's Sky, it's completely unrealistic because 
that's not how things work, first of all. And second of all, like, it would take way longer to do what they're doing. And the, the worlds in No Man's Sky, like, when you get close to them, they, like, suddenly pop in. It's, it just doesn't... It's just not accurate. If you, you have to watch... Go and play No Man's Sky, land on a planet, and you'll see why it wouldn't be anywhere near like that in, in a real-life situation, obviously. And even in Starfield, I don't think they want to do that kind of mechanic. So I've never been bothered by that, but maybe that's something they're going to add from this. City maps is huge. Big complaint of the game when you actually load up your map when you've landed on a planet or city. It's just nothingness. It's just very useless. The map is practically pointless for, for when you're on you know land. Uh, expanded ship customization is going to be interesting. And new gameplay options such as the ability to customize different elements such as ship damage. Uh, carry capacity and new survival mechanics. So I'm slightly confused by that because you can already do change the carry capacity because that's your cargo hold, right? I don't know if that means something different. I don't know. We'll find out. And then obviously DLC is going to be very, very good. We want more DLC. This is something that's needed. Hopefully they get, I mean, it's infinite what they can do with this because they can just keep adding in planets and universes into the game with cool new factions and missions. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see this. I'm glad they're supporting the game. I'm glad they're going to bring new things to the game because I I do think as much as the game is by no means perfect and a lot of people's complaints are extremely valid, I do think it's got moaned about particularly more than usual uh, considering it's an Xbox exclusive. I think that that is one of the things as to why you hear so much hate. I see so much on Twitter and so much hate towards this game purely because of the fact it is an Xbox exclusive, but then you have to turn, as we've done before, uh, to the Steam reviews of this game. Uh, we'll quickly do that, actually, because I know some people find it really interesting to see how, uh, see how the game's doing. Let's jump to the store here. Uh, Starfield. Uh, let's jump in here. The reviews are sitting at mixed, so it is their lowest reviewed. And you have to bear in mind, this isn't Xbox fanboys. This is generally people who've put a ton of time into the game. 133 hours, 75 hours, you know, 200, whatever. So, but there are people that like it, but in the end of the day, it's sitting at a mixed and there is a lot of people, if you look at people's complaints, um, people wouldn't recommend for the full price uh, of 70 Quests themselves, with the exception of a few, are so uninspired and boring. So that's people's main complaints there. Won't go into all of them. But at the end of the day, it was not the worst game in the world. It was actually a good time. I had a good time with it. The Crimson Fleet missions, as I said, were, were, my, were the highlight of my playthrough. I really enjoyed those. But I'd be very interested to see what they could add to this game. I think they could really, really turn this around with some awesome quests. Look at what CD Projekt Red did with Cyberpunk 2.0. They completely revamped it. It's now one of the better games. It actually won a Game of the Year award for Most Improved. Like, it, it's just like, sad we even have to have that category to be honest but this game also could be turned around so i like to see that they're supporting it i'm excited to see what the future of starfield's going to be and, and what they can do to make things better uh, and i hope that they do pursue this i hope they don't just give up and abandon the game after a few updates and a few basic updates i want some decent stuff this dlc needs to be big it needs to be good quality they don't need to go and add another thousand planets what they need to do is add a f like a one universe with very full planets with really interesting stuff and lots to do lots of hours to cover in decent well-crafted quests and that's what we need from this game that's what it was told to us that it would be and hopefully we get that but uh, other than that, the game is actually running well. It, now it's got DLSS 3 with frame generation. I, I'm, I'm playing on a 4090, so I can do 120 FPS at 4K. It's great. I love that. So for me, it looks gorgeous. I've never had a complaint with the graphics. I don't understand people. I think, again, those are very PlayStation fanboy. -y. If you go to the Steam reviews, not many people are actually complaining about the graphics. Load times, yes, that's something I would like to improve. Not the times, just the amount of loads. I shouldn't have to load to go into the ship and load to get out of the ship and then load to go into a building you know that seems ridiculous to me you don't have to do that in many other open world games but uh that's something i would like to improve but graphic wise i've never had an issue i think it looks so detailed like even when you walk up to like uh you know various different like food items with barcodes and things there's so much detail and little things that's all rendered in there and it's just i think it looks incredible personally uh but anyway I'm excited. Good graphics don't doesn't mean a good game. So I'm fine with the graphics. Leave that. Let's just give us some decent stuff to do. And uh, yeah, go from there. But thank you for watching. I hope you guys are having a good day. And uh, I'll see you in future videos. Like and subscribe. It really helped me out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.